Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Pia and I am so happy that you're joining me here today for a little chat about yarn and knitting. Happy New Year everyone! I really hope you all got a great start to 2023. I sure did. I'm going to talk more about that toward the end of the episode, but first we need to talk about knitting because I have quite a lot to show you today. I do have the first finished object of 2023. Hang on, because this is special. I mean, for me, it's special. A pair of socks. I never finish socks, but I finish these and I absolutely love them. These are just very plain and simple two by two ripped socks with a, a short row heel and a kitchen a stitch toe. They're as plain as socks can be. What actually made me finish these is that I paired the sock yarn with some mohair. Um, I was watching Inga from Knitting Traditions and she pairs a lot of her socks. Uh, she pairs the sock yarn with a mohair and I was like, that just looks so cozy and so squishy and lovely. So I decided to try it. Uh, I took some pattern scroll. I do not remember the colorway number, but this is, I just, I just broke into the second bowl, um, but yeah, only, only just. And then I paired it with some drops kit sock. I think this is the colorway uh, number 20. And those two paired to make this absolutely awesome material. I love these socks. They're not blocked. Well, they're blocked on my feet. I'm wearing these on repeat. They are so, so cozy. So I actually see more socks in my future. Hmm? I could, I could use another pair of these. They're just wonderful. Uh, and they were quite fun to knit. They were not not killing me. I wasn't struggling with them too much. So yeah, probably more socks to come. I also finished some vests. Uh, I'm in Texas. Returning viewers might be able to tell from the surroundings. I'm in Texas with my family and I knit some small vests for the boys over here. This big one for John John is made in some leftover yarn bead tender touch. This is uh, some a couple of balls that I had uh, left over from his Glenmore Mini that I made him the last time I was here. And this color is the exact same color as his eyes. So yeah, I decided to make a vest for him and then one for his little brother here. Uh, and Lucas's uh, vest is made in some Lion Brand Heartland Black Canyon, it's called this colorway. And these are just super budget friendly, easy to knit with yarns uh, that can <laughs> that will survive life in a big family. So I do not have patterns for these vests. What I do when I make them, I, I think I have talked about this before because I also made them for uh, my grandchildren in Denmark. I will measure uh, the kid's head and the widest part of their body. Now, for most of the kids, it will be their chest, but for little Lucas, it's probably his 
adorable pot belly, but I will measure the widest point of their bodies. And then I will measure how long I want the vest. Um, yeah. Then the measurement around the head will tell me from a swatch how many stitches I need to cast on for the neckline. Uh, I will always use uh, the, the old Norwegian uh, cast on for necklines, uh, especially for children, because it is, it is like, it's so elastic. So you're sure that, that it will fit over his head. And then I'll work the rib line in some simple one by one ripping on a much smaller needle than, than the main body uh, of the vest. After the neckline, I will identify one stitch uh, in each side. Uh, I will mark this as the shoulder stitch and then I will make increases on either side of the stitch on every round. Uh, and I will do these increases until I reach almost uh, the number that I will need for, for the body. Typically, I will save a few stitches to just do some increases here when I, when I join to work in the round after the armholes. But yeah, I'll do some short rows just to give it a better fit. I will work the front and back separately and then join to work in the round. Finish it off with some simple one by one ribbing and a stretchy bind off and there's a vest. You can see on John's vest, I did put some ribbing uh, in the armholes. That just looked really nice when he's using it over his long sleeve t-shirts. Um, but for Lucas, I didn't because I was trying this vest on him and his mom was like, no, don't do anything more. She really liked these uh, rough edges that will just roll in on themselves. So I was more than happy to follow her on that one. Super, super simple and they will get so much use. I know that because I have made many, many vests for them uh, in the past and they are yeah they they will be put to good use i did bring uh three works in progress when i uh when i came over here and it's three garments that you will have seen a couple of times on the podcast and it was my plan to actually work through those three, finish them. But you know, the best laid plans. I was browsing Ravelry one night. Uh, John John has been sick and, and he has uh, been in my bed. So I've been up a lot of the nights. And so what do you do when you can't really sleep? You browse Ravelry, right? Uh, and I found the coconut bag. Just look at this. This is so adorable. It totally reminds me of the bags that you use in the Buddhist temples in Japan. You use these to carry your stuff around like your sutra books and, and all your paraphernalia. You use it to store things. They're, I love them. They're a big part of my past. So of course I wanted to make one. And of course, it's crochet. <sighs> and this will get ripped out after I record this episode. And it pains me to do so because it's lovely. Just look at this stitch pattern. I did cast on more stitches than was in the pattern because I wanted a slightly larger bag. But just look at this stitch pattern. Isn't it just to die for it's so it's so like scrumptious and ah, it would have made a beautiful bag but i cannot crochet to save my life i mean i 
can crochet. I didn't make this. Uh, it's not the elf that made this for me. But the thing is, I've, I must have a really bad technique. This is something new. I used to be able to crochet. I can't anymore. Just working one round of this, it pains my arm to the extent where I lose control of the muscles in my hand. So if I've been working on this one for just half an hour, uh, then when I go to pick up my teacup, it will drop out of my hand because I, I don't have control of the muscles in my hand. And I think that's probably not a good sign. It's probably more a sign that I should stop crocheting until I get my technique straight. Um, it, it really, I really tried because I so wanted this bag. But what I have decided to do is when I come back to Denmark, I'm going to take one of my old cloth uh, knot bags, measure it, and then I am going to uh, make a knitting pattern so that I can get the bag, uh, but avoid all the pain. But I do have a hard time ripping this out because this stitch pattern, it's everything. Oh, if you can crochet, could you please make this and think of me while doing it so that I could enjoy it vicariously? It's a lovely pattern. Uh, I use this yarn that I picked up over here, Fundamental Cotton from Yarn Bee. And it is this rather thick cotton yarn that has a lot of structure, a lot of twist to it. So it's like almost ropey to the touch. And it's just perfect for bags. I don't know that I would use it for a garment, for accessories like bags, hats, stuff like that. It's amazing. And the colorway gray is just everything. So I am going to put together a knitting pattern so that I can get my Japanese bag uh, without hurting myself too much. Because the pain in my arm for a couple of days, I was actually almost not able to knit. I did not get a lot of knitting done because every time I started knitting, this this muscle here and the joint here would just it, I would get like spasms in my hand so yeah I did not get a lot of knitting done and I had no business casting on a new knitting project but I did I mean of course I did um, Jackie Rose from the Caddy Jacks podcast just released a free pattern for her Saturday's rock. And of course I needed a Saturday's rock. In the beginning, I was like, I'm going to make one as soon as I'm back with my stash and I can pick out some yarns to use for it because I didn't bring a lot of yarn coming over here. Obviously, I was planning to just work through the three garments. I did, however, pack a backup set of yarns, um, some drops of paca and drops kit silk. These two gray colors. Let me just see. I actually have the colorways here. Um, this is color 0501. This is the alpaca. This one, uh, this heathered gray. And the kit silk is color 10. So that's a, a slightly more bluish gray. But these two together just creates this super soft super warm, super squishy fabric. So of course I had to cast on the Saturday Shrug. And I will say, this is probably one of those patterns that will more or less always be on my needles. Because 
it's so versatile. Um, the the finished piece, um, it will, yeah, definitely have a place in my wardrobe. But also the knitting of this shrug. Because of this rhythmic knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit, pearl, I mean, yeah, I am thoroughly enjoying working on this one. I did have to modify the pattern slightly because it is written for a bulky weight and I didn't have that. Uh, but I just cast on uh, some extra stitches. Did I cast on 170 stitches? That's probably not totally wrong. Uh, and yeah, knit, 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 knit. And yeah, I really enjoy this. I sit with it every evening and just listen to a book or watch some knitting podcasts and knit away on it, being totally satisfied with this super, super simple, but almost hypnotizing knit. So I really do recommend that you join the Saturday Shrug Club, which is the hashtag that they created for, for the knit along for this shrug. The three whips that I brought are, as I said, some that returning viewers will have seen before. I did bring my Be Beautiful, but I didn't really put in a lot of work. So I'm not gonna show you that for now. Uh, I also obviously brought my Christmas Day cast on, which uh, I've worked a little bit on it. Um, so I have now finished the body and I started on a sleeve. And yeah, can I just say I love this? This is so me. Uh, I have been playing with color a lot lately and I have come to really appreciate uh, what colors can do but this is so me I feel so comfortable here I feel safe I feel I feel like me all the grays and the neutrals and yeah um, this has not been blocked. I really should block it because I wanted to show you how these lice or loops are, are created. They're little twisted stitches, which I really love the little tex texture that it gives to the body so that you have the, you have all of the patterns on the yoke and then you have the subtle texture on the body and as I said sleeve island I really enjoy knitting sleeves I know that I'm not alone but this it's not not so many people love knitting the sleeves but I do um, I will use my Chaogu minis uh, so that I can just knit around and around and around and you know what if you just knit for half an hour you can see that you actually put a dent in it. So maybe that's why I love it. It seems to just fly by. Uh, I'm going to make these sleeves extra long so that it's really nice and cozy. I did make a mistake on this, which is, I mean, I wrote the pattern and I wrote the pattern uh, to have a bind off in a contrasting color. Clearly, I didn't do that. I didn't do what I asked for. So now I need to figure out if I can be bothered to rip out the bind off or if I should just leave it as it is. I'm probably just gonna leave it. I don't know. Uh, this sweater is knit in a fingering weight highland wool, a rustic wool. So this will bloom with blocking. The yarn will like fill in, even itself out. Uh, it's 
it's gonna be so beautiful once it's blocked and it's a pleasure to knit with any kind of color work is always a pleasure with a rustic yarn because the yarn really helps you doing the color work i did write the pattern with some uh, short row shaping of course and the neck uh, but the short row section also has some patterning because yeah, I like that. But if you're not a fan of purling with color work, you can easily just omit uh, this pattern and just knit the section in, in the same color as you, as you knit the ribbing. That would be perfectly okay and, and just like so many other yoked sweaters. Uh, I just like to play with it and it doesn't really bother me to purl with color work. I mean, it's, it's not that the purl stitch is my favorite stitch, but if I'm just purling or purling with color work, that doesn't really make a huge difference to me. So yeah, I am enjoying working on this one. This Saturday Shrock is almost done. I do not need to work a lot more on this. I think I have maybe a couple of inches to go and then I will definitely work on the sleeves for this one. This pattern isn't testing. My test knitters are actually working simultaneously with me. One of them is already done. So I do hope to be able to uh, publish this pattern soon-ish. Actually, the tester who already finished, she also came up with the name for it. It will be called Small Stars because as she said, the little twisted stitches in the lice pattern, they really look like small stars just all over the body. So small stars, and I do hope to publish this soon-ish. But I did make a new year resolution to not stress myself out, to take the time that I need to make things, well, make them perfect and also to do it um, in a way that is pleasurable all the way through. Because last year, I will say, I thoroughly enjoyed the process of designing and sample knitting, but the rest of it, all the pattern writing, translating, grading, uh, all of this proofreading, running the test, it just became more and more of a, a chore for me. And I don't want that. I want to be able to enjoy every step of the process and not stress myself out about it. So this year I'm gonna work on my planning skills uh, and I will keep reminding myself to slow down and enjoy every step of the process. The last thing that I have been working on this week is my snowflower vest. Uh, this is the one. This is also a new design, which is also in testing. And there is also a test knitter who already finished hers. But yeah, it is a really cozy oversized vest with some sloping shoulders uh, and an oversized body. It is worked in a very, very simple slip stitch pattern. It is, I mean, you cannot make anything that is simpler than this, I guess. Uh, I then added um, a little bit of texture to the bottom bands, some faux cables just to, to give a little bit of interest and also to give a little bit of hold uh, to the edges of the vest. Uh, I am going to add some ribbing, the neckline and 
uh, here in the, the arm openings. For this model, I chose to add the ribbing after the knitting of the body because then you can try it on and you can figure out how how tight you want your uh, your your ribbing up here um, there is on any garment there is a lot of stress to this the the, the neck opening it does carry a lot of the weight of the garment and I do find that casting on, knitting down, and then picking up stitches after actually adds a little more structure, a little more hold to the finished garment. But of course, you can also choose to just cast on uh, the, the stitches for the ribbing, work your ribbing first, and then go into the body. I just find that it adds to the stability of the finished garment if you add the neckline after the fact. But yeah, I am enjoying working on this one. This is my very, very simple knit. It is worked in this super simple slip stitch pattern. Uh, so even though it is worked flat, it's still a pleasure to knit. This will be my plain knitting when I leave Texas here on Monday. And I think I'm gonna make a little video where I show you how I prepare my knitting for a, a, a flight. Because that's probably the question that I get the most is, how do you knit on a plane? How do you get through security? Are you, evil? are you even able, are you allowed to bring your needles? So I'm gonna take you along as I prepare this project for my flight. Uh, and I will try to answer all the questions as I do the actual packing. Let's see, I also have some pattern releases to talk about. If you follow me on Instagram, perhaps you have seen that I have been publishing patterns like a mad woman these past weeks. Um, it's all the hard work that I did uh, in the late summer and fall last year. That is just, everything is ready now. Every week, testers are reporting back we're finished, we're done, we're ready. So yeah, I, <laughs> I am just putting out patterns. If I was more of a businesswoman, I would probably stop and think and like spread out these releases. And maybe one day I will be better at that. Right now, I just feel the need to clear the, clear the table, so to speak, just to get everything out there and start with a clean slate for the new year. So last week I uh, published my pull mitts, these light and easy little mitts, and I published the pattern for my pull shawl. And this is a pattern that I am so happy with because I wrote it so that you can use any yarn in any weight and actually also any amount to get exactly the shawl that you want. This one is huge. It's three meters. I'm not sure how much that is in, in yards, but it's, it's huge. Uh, for this one, I used 600 meters of a light fingering mink yarn held together with um, a lace weight mohair, a silk mohair. Um, both yarns are from a Knitters World, a Danish hand dyer, in the colorway Dusty Fall. And it's just lovely. And then at the other end of the specter, here is 
a teeny tiny pool shawl that I just made with 15 grams of leftover sport weight cashmere. It's the, the leftovers for the, from the pool mitts. It was cashmere, it was so soft and lovely. I couldn't just drop it in my scrap bin. I needed to make something with it right away. So I made this um, and I use it around my hair. I use it as much more often as a shawl cuff where I will take one of my big shawls. Um, and we all know that that arranging a shawl so that it just looks like really, ah, I didn't pay too much attention. That actually takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, so I will uh, put on my shawl, I will fix it so that it looks like I didn't think about it. And then I will add this little thing, just like you would uh, a, a shawl cuff, a, a leather shawl cuff. It's just so easy and it keeps my shawls in place. So if you have 15 grams of leftover laying around, this one is, it's, it's a game changer for me. Sometimes I will like tuck in the ends and other times I will just leave them hanging there. So those two patterns were uh, published last week. Today, which is yesterday, once this video is uploaded, I am releasing my cat number two. This is the sweater, the one that I was working on for our second knit-a-thon. Um, I did not bring it, which is crazy, but I thought I needed like sweater sweaters going over here. It looked like it would be cold. It's not. A short sleeve sweater would have been the perfect garment to have over here right now. But what do you know? Live and you learn, right? So next time I'm gonna come in January, I will know that I need something light, airy, simple, and not too warm. But yeah, I published the pattern uh, and it is one of those patterns that I I have some special feelings for it, both because I did work on it during the Knit-a-thon and, and the Knit-a-thon is just such a lovely event. So the sweaters that come from the Knit-a-thons will always have a special place in my heart. But also I really like the shaping of this one. I love that, that the, the lace uh, on the yoke is built over a, a ripped base so that the fit is really nice. And you can actually go up quite a lot in size for the body, uh, if, if you like, of course, a lot of positive ease, because this ripped lace will keep the sweater uh, in place it, it will give a nice fit even to a, quite an oversized body and then I love the body shaping which likes it pulls the body to the front and a little up so it's a, it's a little playful thing that I enjoy using over uh, over dresses and with skirts jeans with basically everything. I also use it over uh, a white shirt or a multicolored red, pink, orange shirt that I have. And it's just, yeah, that's everything. The yarn is not a color that I would usually choose, but I'm so happy that I went for it. It is knit in a single merino alpaca blend. Merino alpaca silk blend. There you go. Uh, single spun, and the colorway is called Brand Ibuin, Fire in the City. I will, of course, link the yarn in the description box below, along with everything else that I have talked about. So, yeah, that pattern is out now, and I thought that since I now have published the pattern for the cat 
the knit-a-thon number two. It's about time that we announce a date for the knit-a-thon number three, which will be April 22. I really hope that you're able to join us on that day. It's just such a special event. I mean, who doesn't love 24 golden hours just for you, for your knitting, for your knitty friends, for the community that we have? It's so special. It's so lovely. If you haven't participated in, in one of the knit-a-thons before, I think you should try to give it a go. There's no pressure. It's not about pushing through and oh, staying awake. You knit for as, as uh, long or short a time as you want. You take your breaks, you, you do you, uh, and you just take part in, in the community going on for those 24 hours. We have knitters from all over the world joining in and it is it's amazing i i cannot wait i want to do it tomorrow only i promised myself to never do it when i'm in texas again because it's difficult with the little ones and the family and stuff so next time i'm either gonna be home in italy or i will be in denmark we shall see all plans are up in the air right now i just know that on April 22nd, I will be knitting my little heart out. April 22nd is actually also uh, the 40th anniversary for me and Peter's engagement. So I think that's kind of special. Um, celebrating 40 years of love and at the same time celebrating the present, all of these wonderful people that I have met through this podcast, this channel. So yeah, I really hope that you will be able to join in. There is nothing you need to do to join. You just, um, I will be posting a schedule and then you just go to YouTube at the times given uh, and, and knitters will show up uh, to share what they're working on, share their thoughts and Last year we had a yarn dyer dyeing some yarn along with us. We have both times had small concerts, like private concerts, piano concerts from Maline, the playful knitter. Uh, if you have a YouTube channel and you wanna uh, and you wanna contribute to the content, yay! Yay you, I would be so happy to add you to the schedule so that people can find you. Uh, most people do live, uh, YouTube lives for the knit -thon, but if you don't feel comfortable doing a live, you can always just post an episode uh, at any given time and I will put it in the schedule so that people can find you. So yeah, please, please, please join us for the knit -a -thon. It is so much fun. I think that was it for the knitting. Um, life stuff is of course a happy tale because yeah, I'm in Texas. I'm with my family. We arrived here on December 31st, which meant that we came just in time for New Year's Eve. We did have to struggle a little to stay alive until midnight, but we pushed through. We made it. We had a great evening. Our uh, son and daughter-in-law had prepared a wonderful dinner for us. We had a little champagne. We shared all our thoughts and wishes for the new year. And then we got to partake in one of their New Year's traditions. It's a rather new tradition they've had for a couple of years. They're often alone on New Year's because 
they have been traveling for so many years. But what they do is throughout the year, they keep a little jaw of uh, gratitude on their kitchen counter. And every time one of them experiences this little brush of gratitude, they will write a little note, fold it up, put it in the jar. And then on New Year's, they will empty the jar. They will read these little notes aloud to each other and relive all of the joys of the year. And that was so moving and so touching. And I definitely want to do something like that. With the lifestyle that me and Peter have, or I mean, living out of suitcase for half of the year, it's not going to work with a jar on the kitchen table. I think I'm going to go and buy a small notebook and have a little book of gratitude. And then I think uh, we will do that. We write in the notebook and then we fold over the page because part of what was special was that neither of the two knew what the other person had written throughout the year. So just to, to keep things sacred and secret until next New Year's, I think we're just going to fold over uh, each page uh, once we have written on it. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I do know that my first entry will be the gratitude that I feel toward my son and daughter-in-law for showing us a wonderful New Year's tradition. Um, yeah, I have been enjoying this summery weather that we are having. It's beautiful here. Nice to get a little vitamin D. I have been, of course, enjoying hanging out with the grandkids. They're so much fun. Uh, we haven't been going out much. For once, I have not been sick. I used to think that Texas hated me because I was sick every time we went here. This time, I've been here for almost two weeks. I haven't gotten sick. Um, I need to knock on wood and under the table and whatnot. But I think I'm going to make it this time. Yay! Unfortunately, little John John has been not feeling too well. So we have just been having some slow days. Uh, I really love living in, in this kids family. Uh, life is so slow. It is so simple. It's all about the little bitty things. There is time to stop and appreciate the little unassuming joys of life. And I really, really love that. Uh, yeah. Life seen through a toddler and a baby. That's not bad. I don't even know that I remembered to appreciate it when I had a house full of kids, but now I do. As I just mentioned before, we are leaving on Monday, which is always sad, but you know, I've done it so many times. So now I know that I will survive. I will work through the sadness and be perfectly fine. So we are gonna go to Denmark for a few days, hang out with the family there, uh, and then we're going home to Italy, which will be lovely as well. I miss my little stone house in the mountains. I wish, I, I miss, I miss Italian winter. It's how winter is supposed to be. It's cold and it's this clear blue sky with the sun just bursting through and there's snow everywhere and when it snows, it snows. You cannot see out your window. When it rains, it rains. Uh, the mountain right in front of us disappears when the clouds just land on it. Everything is like done thoroughly weather-wise. Um, so yeah, I am so looking forward to that. Looking forward to some long walks and to some cozy evenings cold up in front of a fire and yeah 
Okay, the light is going crazy now. I am trying to move out of the sun constantly. I don't want to put down the blinds because sun. So I think I'm just going to wrap things up here. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I am now going to add a little video that I will record later when I prepare my knitting for the plane. Other than that, I will see you again in one week if you understand Danish or in two weeks where I will be back in English again. Until then, be happy, be safe and enjoy your knitting. Okay, I will be taking you through the process of packing my stuff, preparing my knitting for uh, a plane ride. Uh, because again, as I said, I get so many questions about this. So I thought I'd better make a video. So what I typically do is I will have a rather large personal item. I don't often have a carry-on as such because it's just so annoying to have to handle that through the airports and struggling for space in the overhead compartments and whatnot. So usually I try to just have a rather large personal item and fit everything into that. But <laughs> this time I'm carrying this. It's not big by any means, but I couldn't not bring it because this is my Christmas present from Peter. He has exquisite taste in, in bags and he loves a good French, so yeah. In this, I keep my, um, my wallet, my glasses, my passport, uh, my iPad, phone, the stuff that I will be needing mainly in the airports, uh, but maybe not so much on the flight itself. Uh, then I pack a project bag in which I put all the things that I will be needing on the flight itself. And I always go for a project bag that can take some beatings. This one is great because it's so lightweight um, and it can be like rolled up so it doesn't take up any space. I will actually be able to fit this one into my purse um, just with, with a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of mild uh, persuasion. I do not remember the maker of this bag. Uh, I got it off Etsy, um, but I will try to link it in the description box below. If I do forget, I know that I have it linked in one of my previous episodes, but yeah, it, it's some waxed canvas. It's perfect for this. In it, I of course put my knitting projects. Um, I know that many people prefer to have a small project to work on on the, on the plane. I, I will just pick whatever I feel like working on because you know, a plane ride is stressful enough on its own. You, you need to be working on something that you truly love. So if that means carrying a little bit of extra bulk, so be it. Um, I always use wooden or bamboo needles uh, when I go on a plane. There are no real rules. Uh, some airports have rules that you are allowed to bring your knitting needles. And in that case, of course, you can use metal needles. But not all airports have these rules and not all airport personnel follows these rules or know about these rules. Um, so what I have chosen to do is always use bamboo or uh, wooden needles and always go for a shorter needle just so that it looks less intimidating, less like a weapon. 
and I always make sure to have my needles in my knitting so that it's obvious what they are for. If I need to bring an extra set of need needles, I will often, uh, I will use my, of course, interchangeable sets because that's what I always use. I will then put the extra needle tips in a pencil case together with some pencils and pens and whatnot. Again, to to make it clear, this is not a weapon. I have no intention of using this as a weapon. Plus, it would be a poor weapon. Uh, these are my new favorite needles, my Chaohu Bamboo. I just love them. Uh, the 4-inch the Chaohu Bamboo needles. They're so perfect for any slippery yarn. I always put these uh, stitch stoppers on uh, well, to avoid <laughs> losing all my stitches when I pull it out, but again also to, to make it look uh, less intimidating. And it was like, when I take these precautions, I have not yet had a problem and I feel bad even saying it oh no what if, what if it happens this time but I don't think it will I do always take these precautions um, and yeah wish me luck <laughs> there shouldn't be a problem I also make sure that I have enough yarn um, I am thinking if I should wind another skein, but that is crazy. It's a, what is it, a nine, 10 hour flight, something like that. I cannot possibly knit up more than this uh, in that amount of time. So I should be fine. Uh, but that is something that I always think about. Also, when I choose the project, is this enough to keep me entertained for the time that I will have to be on the plane? but I think I'll be fine with this. In my project bag, uh, I also carry some different stuff. I have a measuring tape. If this was a more complicated project, I would probably also be carrying uh, a little uh, needle and uh, a, a mini scissors, these little snippers that, that you can get. But for this, I'm just going to be knitting away. I don't need that, but I do always need my measuring tape, of course. I also keep a uh, hand lotion, uh, a lotion bar, because it's just so much more convenient. Uh, since it's uh, not a liquid, I don't have to pull it out of my bag at the airport security. I can just keep it here. This one is wonderful. Uh, I got it off Amazon and yeah, I'm loving it. A little chapstick. Uh, I, do, I do dry out on a plane. I'm, I'm probably not the only one, but I always carry these two. Then I carry a little bitty drawstring bag that I use for my rings because my hands will uh, swell up during the flight. So I take off my rings, I put them in this little drawstring bag and I don't forget them. I once tried uh, standing up to get out of the plane and Peter then looking down on my seat going, don't you need your wedding ring? Yeah. So now carry a little drawstring bag to put my rings in. Of course, an elastic band to get the hair out of the way and my AirPods so that I can listen to an audio book or some music, whatever I want to entertain myself with throughout the flight. But when I pack my project bag this way, the project bag is all that I'm going to need for the duration of the flight. I'm not going to need to also have my purse down. The last thing that I always put in is of course a shawl because as we all know on a plane it's either freezing cold or 
dripping hot. So uh, yeah, I always bring a shawl that I can wrap up in and be comfortable and I can easily take it off. I also use it um, for when I need to take a nap. I don't like um, using a sleep mask. I have yet to find one that doesn't bother me. So I will just uh, put the shawl over my head, look like a canary in a cage. But you know what? Whatever works, right? It's all about trying to be comfortable on the plane. <laughs>